Oh, hi there. Welcome back to Be Like Christ. I know that you've all been anxiously awaiting the next Bible study in Matthew chapter 5, and so we must continue with verse 38 through 41 today. Let's read it together. You have heard that it is said, that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. This text is very interesting and is also very hard (laughs) to apply. Jesus says here, in, in the old days, in the Old Testament, you basically had a law and it was a retaliatory system, right? If you did something to somebody else, that was going to be done to you. Jesus, again here, is introducing his new law, and he says, uh, but I'm going to change that. It used to be an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. What does he mean by that? You know, that's, that can be somewhat difficult to understand. You mean I can never resist anyone who wants to do evil to me? That means like if somebody knocks on my door and says, hi, I'm here to kill your wife and children, I'm supposed to go sit down on the couch and watch SpongeBob and not get in his way? Well, I don't think that's the way that Jesus intended us to understand this text. I think if you set it in contrast with the old principle, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, the old principle is you do something to me, then I'm going to do it back to you. And Jesus says, don't return that evil for evil. Somebody does wrong, wrongs you, don't return evil back to them. He says in that famous verse, if anyone comes and smacks you across the face, don't hit him back. Turn the other cheek and let him hit the other cheek too. So in principle, if somebody abuses you, the right response is not to punch them back and abuse them. Uh, It's to treat them well, even though they mistreated you. Jesus says, again, if there's a man and and he comes and he takes you to court because he wants something that you have and and he's unjust in doing it, you know what? Just let him have it. And And while you're doing that, give him your cloak too. So for us, if somebody is going to take something from us and they don't have a right to it, I think Jesus is teaching a principle that that these things are temporal, uh, they're material possessions, give them to them. And you know what? Give them even more than what he's trying to take. Then the third thing he says is if someone wants you to go one mile, go with them two. You've probably heard this story, but under the Roman Empire in Jesus' day, any soldier was allowed to ask a citizen or tell a citizen, you've got to carry my stuff for a mile. Obviously, no one would like this. No one wants to go out of their way and inconvenience themselves because this soldier doesn't want to carry his own backpack. And certainly the soldiers knew that they were inconveniencing others for their own good, but they probably didn't care. And what Jesus says is if somebody asks you to do this, don't just go with them that one mile that you're required by law. Go with them a second. And we look at some of these principles and we think, Jesus can't really mean this. Can he? You mean if someone wants to take something from me unlawfully and and cheat me out of something, that I should just let him have it and that I should give him more than what he's trying to take? (laughs) You might say, look, Jesus, no one's going to smack me in the face and get away with it. And Jesus says uh, they should. Or your response might be, why would I go a second mile with a man who selfishly inconvenienced me and ruined my day because he was too lazy to do something for himself? I'm not doing that. And Jesus says, you should. Can you imagine Jesus is on this mountain, Sermon on the Mount, and these people are listening to him like Jesus wants us to spend our days in the service of ungrateful people and ungrateful Roman soldiers. He wants them, you know, if if the Roman says, after I've walked two miles, the Roman says, well, give me your coat because it's cold out here, that he wants me to give it to him and give him more than what he asked for. That, that sounds like a horrible life. I don't want to live like that. And I think what Jesus is really communicating to these people is, yeah, that would be a life that would be different than, than any other human being is going to live. But you know what? That would be a life that looks a lot like mine. Jesus is saying, this is the life that I am living for you. There's going to be a time when I turn the other cheek, even though I can call down the hosts of heaven to retaliate. When people slap me across the face and mock me, I'm going to turn the other cheek. This tremendous miscarriage of justice is going to happen, and I'm not going to make a case. I'm going to go, and I'm going to suffer and continue to suffer for the good of these other people. And then he says, you think it's too much for me to ask you to walk one mile? I came from heaven, 
and I'm not even just coming to heaven to live on this earth and to debase myself that far. I'm going the second mile to the point where I'm going to die, and I'm going to do it for you and your souls. So as modern day readers, it's, it's easy for us to say, well, let's not take these verses too practically. Jesus is just talking about kind of vague principles here, and you apply them however you want. Uh, I don't think that's true. You might say these are too radical to really actually apply in your life. And they are radical, and they're different, and they're not human. They're divine, and they're heavenly principles. And although our lives may be devoid of a few more physical possessions, and our lives may be more inconvenienced for the sake of others, even those who abuse us, if we did make a real practical application, we'd look a whole lot more like Jesus.